Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of his holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The glory of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to stick like a cat and sear you like a wild ox, young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of the dead. The voice of the Lord makes the deer get hurt and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all dry war. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned his king forever. May the Lord his strength. May the Lord bless his people in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. I believe in God, the Father of life, made for heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered for the time of Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The verse of the week. Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. What is baptism? Baptism is not just plain water. But it is the water included in God's command and combined with God's word, which is that word of God. Christ our Lord says in the last chapter of Matthew, Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Merciful Father, through holy baptism, you called us to be your own possession. Grant that our lives may evidence the working of your Holy Spirit in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. According to the image of your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The reading for today is going to be Matthew chapter 3, verse 13 to 17. And let me get that to where it needs to be. There you go, Matthew. Matthew chapter 3, it's up there on the screen for you. Well, it will be. So as you can tell, if you can, hopefully you can notice, um, today we are really in the midst of a series of um, scripture readings that basically revolve around the theme of baptism. You can see it up, you know, up on the above there, you see the little words, baptism, right there. Uh, we're going to be talking about the baptism of Jesus here. Um, the closing hymn is going to revolve around that theme. Uh, you know, as we just I just did the words from the catechism. What is baptism? The verse of the week revolves around baptism. So we have a very strong baptism theme. 
So it's a good time to refresh. What is baptism? Where do we find it in the scriptures? So, so here we are. We are in Matthew chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. <clears throat> John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the text. So, I'm going to de there's a few things to deal with in this text. Um, there's obviously the theme of baptism because when Jesus comes to be baptized um, the word baptism baptizo literally means to wash now sometimes you'll have people that'll get clever and say that baptizo has to mean um, immersion um, the problem with that is there's no nothing that goes with that so let me I'm gonna pull up here Another resource. So I'm looking at the Greek word baptizo. And I'm going to pull up this resource. It's known as BDAG. So you can see it right there on the screen. It probably means nothing to you as you look at it. But so here we go. First, here we go. Baptizo means wash ceremonially for purpose of purification. So the, the theory is, so here it is, it says it could mean, it has to mean plunge, dip, wash, baptize. It doesn't necessarily have to mean that, though. The problem with that theory is that there is a, there's a verse in the Gospel of Mark where it talk, uses the Greek word baptizo um, about the washing of couches. And, you know, a couch, you're probably not going to dip it. You're not going to, like, lift up the couch and drop it dip it into water you're probably pouring water on it your sprinkling it or whatever so baptizo does not have to be immersion um, that's kind of something that people have invented um, it says here let it be so now for thus it is fitting john did not want to be baptized but didn't think he deserved to but jesus tells him it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness what does Jesus mean by that? Well, see, baptism. So, okay, so baptism is kind of a tricky subject to, to some degree. Because, well, it is obviously because of the divisions within church bodies, but it's also tricky in the fact that in the Gospels, there's actually really, uh, I'd say, there's about four different baptisms that are mentioned. The first baptism is the one that John was doing. The baptism that we read about last Friday. So, you know, they're coming out to Jordan. Um, he says, let's see if I can find that passage. Ah. He says, I baptize you with water for repentance. So there, he's indicating that there is another baptism. He's baptizing. His baptism is a sign of repentance. It's a sign of confession of sin. Um, it's not the same. So this is actually the baptism that certain church bodies have is more in line with John's baptism. But then, but he said he distinguishes. There's another baptism. I he will baptize you <clears throat> with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now what happens is that certain church bodies they do both of these. Oh, we're going to do this. And we're going to do this later. Well, they may have been baptized with water, but have they received Holy Spirit baptism? Well, the thing is, is that this baptism, baptism with water with repentance, came to an end with John. Jesus brought forth a new baptism. This gets reflected in the book of Acts. Um, that there is, that that baptism was not needed anymore. This is the baptism. 
so Jesus's baptism, which we're going to talk about more later throughout the weeks, and it's kind of getting reflected as we talk about it, as we read the words from the small catechism, the baptism that Jesus does gives the Holy Spirit. It gives forgiveness of sins. It marks you as a child of God, et cetera, et cetera. But then you have this baptism. This is a baptism that one and only one person, and only one person in the history of the world ever has or will receive, and that is the baptism that Jesus received. The baptism that is necessary to fulfill righteousness. So in Jesus, so the passage that's going to kind of help us a little bit here, we're going to go to first or sorry, not 1 Corinthians, but 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And let me go to this. It says, there we go, you see? Chapter 5, verse 21, you see it's highlighted right there for you. For our sake, he, God, made him to be sin who no, knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. So in other words, when Jesus was being baptized, he was, rece he was receiving your, your sin. He received my sin. He received the sin of the world because this was necessary to fulfill all righteousness. So in, bapti in your baptism, you are clothed with the righteousness of Christ. In Jesus' baptism, he is clothed with your righteousness. This is what is known as the great exchange. He gets your poopy rags worth of righteousness. And you get his perfect, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish righteousness. And then it says here, when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water. Okay, so... There's, a, there's this belief that you, uh, bapt, going back to that thing about immersion, does baptism have to be immersion? And the whole argument is, he went up from the water. That does not necessarily mean that Jesus was immersed. He might have been, but we don't know that. It doesn't actually say that. Saying that he was immersed is known as, is, would be a form of what we call eisegesis. Eisegesis is what you call, is where you read something into the text that isn't necessarily there. The problem is it doesn't actually say it. It presumes it because he went up from the water. But let's just say, let's say Jesus was standing knee deep in water. If he stepped up, stepped out of the water, how would you say that? You would say he went up out of the water, even if he was only knee deep. If he was ankle deep, you say he went up from up out from the water. He could have been neck deep. He could have been head deep. You would still use the same way, language. All it means is that some portion of his body, from his ankles all the way up to the top of his head, was in the water at some point, and he went up from it. And what and so does not necessitate immersion. All right. To say it has to be immersion is reading into the something into the text that's not there. The heavens were opened to him, and he saw the spirit of God. Okay, so there is some very prominent preachers out there. Uh, people that believe teach what is known as modalism. Um, modalism is the notion or the idea that the father, you know, so the father is God, the son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And they'll say, well, there's just three different aspects of God. And this kind of gets um, revealed in um, some, time, some of our explanations of the Trinity. So somebody will say, well, you know, the Trinity is like the sun. Um, the, or is, no, the Trinity is like water. Water could be vapor. It could be um, ice or it could be liquid. The problem is it's all the same water. It's just different modes of water. And people will say the same, sometimes will teach the same kind of idea with the Trinity. That, the, that well, sometimes God is in the form of the Son. Sometimes God is in the form of the Holy Spirit. And then sometimes God is in the form of the Father. The problem with that is texts like this. Jesus, who is God, is coming up out of the water. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit is coming up, is descending on him. 
So Jesus is in the water. The Holy Spirit is descending. And we don't know if he was actually a dove or if he was descending in the form of a dove. If he looked like a dove, whatever case, he's descending like a dove and coming to rest on Jesus. So Jesus is in the water. The Holy Spirit is descending. And then the Father, it says, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. And so this is God the Father speaking. So the Father is speaking. The Holy Spirit is descending. And Jesus is in the water. God, God, God. So do we have three gods? No, because we actually it's pretty well confessed in Deuteronomy that Yahweh, your God, Yahweh is one. So there's only one God. And yet here we got him in three places. This is the mystery of the Trinity. Three persons, one God. So the Father is God. So the Father is God. The Son is God. The Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but there is one God. And just finally, I want to mention, make point to this. When Jesus came up out of the water, he was told, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Jesus was baptized. In, because it was necessary for, to fulfill all righteousness. Not because he had sin. Rather, he was, he was baptized in order to receive sin sin so that when you were baptized your sin would be cleansed and you would emerge from the waters and just as with Jesus the father could, would say unto you this is my beloved son with whom I am well pleased so we pray Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is a kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We conclude with the hymn of the week.